Hi friends, welcome to Crud Reading. We are back with yet another important lecture on the top one line series that we are doing in our YouTube channel. So this is the part two. So I hope yesterday you have already watched part one, which consisted of 100 important one liners. And this is part two. Again in the part two, we have brought out to you 100 one liners. Right. So let's begin. Now, let's begin the first thing. RTGS stands for real time cross settlement. Okay real-time cross settlement sometimes they may ask the abbreviation and this is available all days so in the coming section do mention who manages rtgs right who manages the minimum amount to be remitted in the rtgs is 2 lakh with no upper ceiling utr stands for unique transaction reference so even if you do neft imps rtgs in your from your net banking right you get an utr number so it's an unique transaction reference 22 character code used to uniquely identify a transaction in RTGS system. So this is valid for the IMPS uh, and NFT as well, right? Now, LEI. LEI stands for legal entity identifier and it's a 20 digit uniquely identified parties to a financial transaction worldwide. Now, so the amount, the minimum value is 50 crore for LEI. So if you want to remit more than 50 crore, right, then you have to get the LEI. So all payment transaction value 50 crore and above undertaken by a non-individual. And LEI, when I say you, I mean company, not you, right, should include remitter and beneficiary LEI information from April 1, 2021. It became mandatory. Then the next set of information is NEFT, right. So NEFT again is National Electronic Fund Transfer. It is owned and operated by Reserve Bank of India, available 24-7-365, right? There is no limit imposed by RBI for trans fund transfer using NEFT. So there is basically no limit, okay? So available for one-way fund transfer of India to Nepal up to 50,000. So you can transfer fund to Nepal as well using NEFT. IFSC with reference to fund transfer stands for Indian Financial System Code, right? So every bank, every branch has a unique, you know, uh, 11 digit alphanumeric uh, IFSC code, right? So, for example, SBI, SBI and 000, then XXX would be the section code, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, yeah. Four digit code would be the uh, branch code, okay? So, this is an alphanumeric code. Let's see the next one, gift city, right? So gift stand for Gujarat International Finance Tech City gift located at where? Gandhinagar, Gujarat. So IFSC stands for International Financial Service Center Authority, right? The International Financial Service Center Authority has been established on April 27, 2022. Very important. Headquartered in gift city, uh, Gandhinagar, Gujarat, right? Let's move forward. CTS. CTS stands for Check truncation system. This is start for check truncation system. CTS 2010. Right? Check truncation is the process of starting the flow of physical check issued by a drawer at some point by presenting bank envelope to the paying bank, paying bank branch. Right? Now, POS stands for point of sale. What does POS stands for? It's point of sale. Now, cash can also be withdrawn. Uh, withdrawn at POS terminals through unified payment UPI, right? See, POS basically a machine. When you go to buy something in a mall and all, and then you ask, card chalta hai kya? And they bring in a small machine, a tangle shaped machine where you put your card and there are buttons where you put your, there is a small black and white LED display and now KTM is bringing color screen, touch screen and all. So let's say, that's again a POS machine with an advanced version, although, so, you know, fine lab. Fine Labs is the company in India that manages largest network of POS. Okay, so through this POS, you can you know withdraw money as well using Aadhaar, uh, Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana, right? So you you might be knowing that many petrol pumps are giving money, right? Fino Bank, Fino Payment Bank is setting this POS terminals in the petrol pumps, and they are giving a uh, money, right? So if you don't know, 
next time when you cross over a petrol pump just see if you can find the board of Pinot payment bank means that that particular petrol pump is PUS and average petrol pump they accept the money as well through your card they will you know give the money as well then PPI stands for prepaid payment instrument okay prepaid payment instrument now what is prepaid payment instrument understand you you know uh, PPI is like a um, like say you you buy an Flipkart or Amazon voucher of rupees 1000 so you know this can also be known as prepaid payment instrument instrument that is okay so PPI are instrument that facilitate purchase of goods and service including financial service remittance fund transfer against the value stored on such instrument right so section 18 of the payment and settlement system regulates this then the cash loading of PPI is limited to 50,000 per month so now I gave you a particular one example but PPI are like you know cards in which you can store 50,000 rupees per month subject to overall limit of PPI now tokenization token this is very important okay this has been discussion in the news in the past two to three months tokenization refers to replacement of actual card details with an alternate code code called token which shall be unique for a combination of card token requester and a device right let's say you have a card abcd right abcd means you have a card with number abcd hypothetical example now when you enter it in the flipkart account flipkart already know your card details right they will store this number and when you want to transact something you will have to give your cvv although they will not store cvv but they will know what your cvv is the server will know and this combination is very risky right so in order to you know uh, uh, bring you out from this risk this particular number is being replaced by a token jab tumko chahiye tum usko generate karo aur abcd ke jagah pe wo number ko that will be a unique number right so this means your abcd will be secret to you and will not be known to anyone okay so in this way you are secured let's move forward then atm atm stands for automatic teller machine okay so many a time you will listen anytime money the full form of atm is anytime money it's not the same right so it's automated teller machine the first ATM in India was set up in 1987 by HSBC in Mumbai. Okay. Demand draft check validity three months from the date of issue. Demand draft and checks are valid for three months from the date of issue. Check ke upar mein yahan pe jo date likha hua rata hai, right inside top corner pe, yahan se three months. Now, TREX stands for Trade Receivable Discount System. Trade Receivable Discounting System. So it's an electronic platform for facilitating the financing discounting of trade receivables of MSME through multiple financers. So I think you already understand this. Let's say you are you are an MSME, right? And you have sold a good of 100 rupees to me. But what I told you is I will not give you money now. I'll give you after one month. So now you, I mean, I owe 100 rupees to you and you you know you will get this amount so i'm not using the accounting terms because i understand many of you are not from the accounting background now this is your trade receivable that you will receive this amount right but what if you you want this amount in one day so you go to trades platform okay and you will uh, you will look for the financer who will say okay i will give you 95 rupees today you give me this receivable you agree to it you will take this 95 rupees and you will give your receivable to the other guy the other guy after a month will come to me okay after a month it will it will come to me and collect the money so although this was an hypothetical example it doesn't work like this just understand discounting work like this right so this guy is not going to come to me right so there is a different technique that 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 uh, goes through in the background let's not discuss that now what is trade unless you understand what trade says all these things discussion will go in vain that's why you know it's important you understand what discounting is tumko aaj 95 rupees mil gaya hai to tum future mein theek hai you 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 know my my uh, wish is also fulfilled that i am not able to pay now i'll pay after one month your wish is also fulfilled you have actually sold the good on cash 
although you could have earned 5 rupees if you if you have waited for just one month but you are an msme you are small you need the money you need the working capital you don't have huge cash with you right it's the day to day working capital that is keeping your business running that's why this kind of platform helps msme right so this receivable can be due from corporates and other buyers right including government department public sector undertakings only msme can participate as seller in trades nobody can do as per the rbi integrated ombudsman scheme rbi ios the amount of compensation that the ombudsman can sanction x 20 lakh right as per the rbi integrated ombudsman scheme rbi ios the ombudsman may award compensation not exceeding rupees 1 lakh to the complaint for mental agony and harassment okay as per the rbi integrated ombudsman can file appeal within 30 days of uh, of the date of receipt of communication of award or rejection of complaint right ecs ecs stands for what electronic clearing service now what is ecs i think you already know these things for example when you buy a bike or a mobile phone uh, so no most of the mo mobile phone that you buy is from your credit card right so let's not bring that example let us bring an example of your vehicle maybe uh, uh, maybe a bike or maybe a car when you buy that right month on month your emi amount would be deducted from the saving account of yours right so it can be your salary account it can be your saving account or it can be any other account managed by you right how does that happen that happens through the instruction that you give while you take that loan through ecs Maybe you have taken loan from SDFC, but you hold an account in SBI. No problem. SDFC will come to SBI and collect that amount. Okay. And that is known as electronic clearing service, ECS system. And this can also, you know, happen in, uh, you can, in the policy. Let's say you buy a policy for which you have to pay a monthly premium. That can happen as well. Let's move forward. NACH. NACH stands for National Automated Clearing House. Right. National Automatic Clearing House NACH is a centralized system operated by National Payment Corporation of India, NPCI. Right? Then NPCI started in which year? In the year of 2008. It's a non-profit company under the supervision of Section 25 of Companies Act 1956. And now this 1956 is 2013 after the latest amendments. MICR stands for Magnetic In Character Recognition. Right? Now what is MICR? check you know there are some black 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 dots so what are those dots that are actually magnetic in character recognition okay usme kuch kuch information loaded rehta hai micr ka code kitna hota hai they are total nine digit code okay they are nine digit code neft facility for which country it is available for nepal up to 50000 that we have already seen PSS Act, Payment and Settlements Act 2007 came into force with effect from 12th August 2018. Very important. Very important point. Let's move forward. Okay. ATM setup. Okay. Now let us read about ATM. White label ATM. What does this mean? ATM setup owned and operated by non banks are called white label. Non bank. Okay. Aapne dekha hoga. Hitachi ka ATM laga hua hai at some railway stations, right? So I don't know how many, but yes, I have seen uh, one of uh, the station I have personally seen. It has Hitachi, uh, Hitachi ATMs. Again, you would find Tata, I think Tata Color or Indigo, something like that, right? I don't remember the exact name, but yes, there is an ATM operated by Tata Group as well. Those are known as white label ATM. You know, that are owned and operated by non-banks. Now, brown label ATMs are those automated teller machine where hardware and the lease of ATM machine is owned by a service provider. Okay, brown level ATM. But cash management and connectivity to banking network is provided by a sponsor bank whose brand name is used on the ATM. Got it? So, let's move forward. Now, if principal, okay, so this is about the SMA. If principal or interest payment overdue between 30 to 60 days, then it is referred as SMA 1. For, for what? So I think you already know this. In the past, we have brought out your current affairs. In the current affairs, we have discussed this in an extensive manner. 
so let's not discuss it here for sma0 it's bit more than 30 days for one it's 30 to 61 days for two it's 61 to 90 days gstn stands for goods and service tax identification number okay don't get confidence if you know gst gst is goods and service tax but gstin means goods and service tax identification number the portal of gstn is made and managed by infosys okay mr naldan ninkani who is also the co-founder and non-executive director of the infosys limited played a very important role in aadhaar and gstn right gstn stands for goods and service tax network okay then tax information exchange system in x x sys is a centralized system facilitating information exchange among commercial tax department of all states for better administrative of interstate trade right next eway bill so what is eway bill let's say a good is moving from one state let's say you know cg and it is moving to od so when a truck moves across the border they would need eway bill in octroi check post okay right? so this is eway bill eway bill and the gst system is applicable for goods having value more than 15000 okay obviously a truck can look ca carry a good that cost more than 50000 right now the equity share of central government of gstn is 24.5% the central government holds 24.5% the state government holds 24.5% all these states right so it's not about particular state all these states combined we hold 24.5 percent sdfc 10 percent sdfc bank 10 percent nse 10 percent icici bank 10 percent lic housing finance 11 percent let's move forward who is the chairman of gstn right it's the tarun bajaj he has entrusted with the charge of chairman gstn is addition to his regular position of revenue secretary and ceo of UIDAI. As per the definition of MSME, medium enterprise are those whose investment in plant and machinery or equipment not more than 50 crore and annual turnover not more than 250 crore. Right? Then, PSL targets are applicable to every commercial bank, including regional rural bank, small finance bank, local area bank, and primary urban cooperative banks. Okay? PSL targets for RRB is 75% of ANBC or CEOB. So you don't get into the technicalities of what ANBC, CEO, uh, CEOB is. Just get the abbreviation and that's fine. Credit equivalent of balance sheet exposure or adjusted net bank credit. Okay, ANBC. Now for domestic banks. Excluding RRB and a small finance bank, 40% of the RRB and a small finance bank, 75%. Right? Let's and primary urban cooperative bank to increase by 75% by March 31st, 2024. Now, under PSL target for agriculture sector is 18%. 18% for agriculture, out of which a target of 10% is prescribed for a small and marginal farmers. Micro enterprise 7.5%. Advances to weaker section. 12%, 15% for RRB, not applicable to foreign bank and other with less than 20 branches. Very important line, very, very important line. Okay, it will ask if it is applicable to foreign bank or not with a condition. So, yes, it doesn't apply whose branch is less than 20 in the country. Now, let's move forward. Under PSL, loans for agriculture and structure will be subject to an aggregate sanction limit of 100 crore per borrower from the banking system. Okay. So, under PSL, loans to startup that are engaged in agriculture and its service are 50 crore. Right. These are the targets of PSL. Right. Under PSL, loans available to individual for education purpose, including vocational, not exceeding rupees 20 lakh for each one. Now, under PSL loan to individual up to 35 lakh in metropolitan center and 25 lakh in other center for purchase construction of dwelling unit per family provided the overall cost of dwelling unit in the metropolitan center and other does not cross 45 lakh and 30 lakh respectively. If it crosses, then it's not PSL. Means the loan will not be calculated under the PSL. Under PSL, banks loan up to a limit of 30 crore to borrowers for purpose like solar based 
power generator biomass windmill okay means all these things uh, green energy right it's at 30 crores okay for individual household the loan limit will be 30 lakh per borrower uh, 10 lakh per borrower no loan related to ad hoc services inspection charge should be levied on primary sector up to 25,000. Very important line. Now, agriculture. On lending by NVFC for term lending components under the agriculture will be allowed up to 10 lakh per borrower. Micro and small enterprise. Okay. On lending by NVFC. So, all the previous were banks. Now, it's NVFC will be allowed up to 20 lakhs per borrower. Look, you don't have to remember everything, right? Just try to think what is more important like agriculture, MSME. Means these are the sector that people talk the most. And when I say people, it's the countrymen, it's the government, right? And that is what the current affair, and that is what forms the current affair, right? So you have to relate everything related to current affairs. Even the green energy as well, because COP26 that has happened very recently. So everything related to green energy is also important. Then bank loans to housing finance companies on lending purpose for the purpose of purchase construction right? means for everything it's 20 lakh per borrower right let's move forward so you can go through it for damage it's 10 lakh okay for, for distressed person it's 1 lakh per borrower now if the bank have any shortfall in lending priority sector then the rest of our amount shall be you know contributed to RIDF Google Infrastructure Development Fund now how this thing happens there is a you know video particularly video on our YouTube channel I think that was uploaded three to four months back just go ahead and search that that's I think 20 to 22 minutes video and that would be you know enough to understand how PSL works and how does uh, this thing work RIDF works and how RIDF how money is utilized from RIDF here we understood let's say the target is rupees 100 for a bank the bank could only give 90 as a loan for the year rest 10 rupees will go to RIDF now what happens now how will RIDF money will be used right so it will be used uh, as per the instruction from NABARD because NABARD has established it right now let's move forward and let's see PSLC stands for priority sector lending certificates what are the objective the objective to enable banks to achieve the priority sector lending target and sub target by purchase of this instrument in the event of shortfall now you see let's say SBI have bigger penetration in the rural India the target for agriculture is 500 rupees this is hypothetical example okay now ICICI not the presence of ICICI is also Google but not uh, as Google as SBI right but ICICI could only do let's say 400 okay right. let me write it here the target is 500 okay SBI did 700 SBI did 700 and ICICI could only do you know 200 or let's say 300 so using the ecober platform icici will know that sbi has overachieved overachieved the uh, psl uh, priority sector lending so what sbi will do sbi will sell off its priority sector loans to icici bank although the emis and all will be received by sbi so SBI will only sell certificate, it will not sell the actual asset, right? It will sell PSLC of how much? Of 200. So, minus 200 will give 500, means target met, and this 200 they will give it to ICIC, means plus 200 that will give 500, means target met. Okay, how? Priority sector lending certificate using PSLC, the both the bank will achieve the target right now let's move forward the PSLC would have a standard lot size of 25 lakh and multiple thereof right 25 lakh se jada hoga. now lead bank scheme was introduced by RBI in December 1969 lead bank scheme 
the genesis of lead bank scheme can be traced back to the strategic group headed by dr sorry professor d r kagan okay let's move forward blbc meeting by the lead bank are held quarterly interval so this minor details are not actually important but yes you should know because you have descriptive now this is the meeting should be conveyed by the lead bank at quarterly interval right now SLBC meetings are held on quarterly basis. So most of the meetings you are seeing it is held the quarterly basis, right? Service area approach SA was introduced in the year 1989. Service area approach introduced in April 1989 for planned and orderly development of rural and semi-development area was applicable to all scheduled and commercial bank including regional rural banks. Now under SSA each bank branch in a rural or semi urban area was designated to serve an area of 15 to 25 villages and the branch was responsible for meeting the needs of bank credit of its service area the primary objective of saa was to increase productive lending and forge effective linkage between bank credit production productivity and increase in income level right now, doubling in farmers in the target year is 2022, means the current year. Women SSG consists of 10 to 20 members. All the So, what is SSG? Small help group, right? Small help group. Now, all women SSG would be eligible for interim subvention on credit up to rupees 3 lakh at a subvention rate of 7% per annum okay for the women SSG in this district an additional income subvention of 3% is also available on prompt repayment reducing the effective rate of interest to 4% revolving fund RF support to SSG with a minimum of 10,000 up to rupees maximum of 15,000 per SSG now banking ombudsman scheme is introduced under section 35a of the banking regulation act 1949 by the rbi effect from 1995 so very important thing right very important thing now let's move forward okay so no some information was here as well okay the amount if any would be paid so under banking ombudsman scheme okay the amount if any to be paid by the bank to the complaint by way of compensation for any loss suffered by the complaint is limited to the amount agency directly out of or omission of bank rupees 20 lakh so the maximum amount is 20 lakh under the rbi integrated banking ombudsman scheme the banking ombudsman be about not exceeding 1 lakh to the complaint for general mental agony and harassment so if i mean if you win the case against any ba any bank you could get maximum of 1 lakh rupees for the harassment that bank has did. Now, one can file the appeal against the award or decision of the banking ombudsman rejecting the complaint within 30 days of the date of receipt of the award. The appellate authority may, if he she is satisfied that the applicant has sufficient cause for not making an application for appeal within time, also allow a further period not exceeding 30 days. Then, the complaints can file a complaint to the banking ombudsman if he had made a written representation to the bank and the bank had rejected the complaint or the complainant had not received any reply within a period of one month after the bank received this representation or complaint is not satisfied with the reply given to him by the bank. Right? So this much minor detail absolutely not important but yes the data I mean the 20 lakh, the upper selling, the 1 lakh, all these things you should know. MCLR stands for Marginal Cost of Fund Based Lending Rate. So MCLR introduced on 1st April 2016 to determine the rate of interest for loan. Right? So it is an internal reference rate for bank to determine the interest they can levy on the loans. Now the minimum capital required for licensing of a new bank in the private sector is 500 crore. At least 25% of the branches should be in tier 3 or 2 tier 6 cities. Now, existing banks are allowed up to 74 of FDI automatic up to 49%. Government rule beyond 49% up to 74% by approval. FDI limit in public sector bank is 20 
percent. So they can receive only 20 percent, not more than that. FDI limit in insurance company is how much? Is 49 percent, right? And 100 percent automatic credit information companies is 100 percent automatic. Now, 25 percent of the total number of banking outlets opened during a financial year should be located in an unbanked rural center. The minimum capital requirement for setting up small finance bank 200 crore internal working group has recommended for 300 crore. Usha Thorat Committee on Financial Institution has said that the 25% of the new branch in a uh, in unbanked rural areas. Okay. Let's move forward. The national committee requirement for setting up the payment map 100 crore. Who have said this? Nachiket Moore Committee. Okay. And the payment bank. The maximum is 1 lakh rupees per individual, right? Cannot issue credit card. They can't issue credit card. Like Paytm Bank, Idle Payment Bank, they can't issue credit card, right? Then payment can be converted. Payment bank can be converted to small finance bank after how many years? After five years. Internal working group have recommended three years time period. Now, RRB was set up based on the recommendation of Nasimman committee. The first regional rule and bank was Prathama Gramin Bank. RRB are regulated by Regional Rural Bank Act 1976. Okay. The government of India, the concerned state government and the sponsoring nationalized bank contribute the share capital of RRB in the proportion of 50, 15 percent and 35 percent. How many people are there? 50 percent by GOI, government of India, 15 percent by the state government, by the concerned state government. If the bank is opening in Uttar Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh government will do. If the bank is opening in Bihar, then the Bihar government will do and so on. And rest 35%, sorry, rest 35% will be sponsored bank. Okay, who is the bank? Let's say Syndicate Bank, Bank of Baroda or PNB or whosoever it is, right? Public Credit Registry, PCR. Created by whom? RBI. It's to public digitally registry to capture and store financial information of borrowers in India. Okay. Both existing and new borrowers. The credit registry will collect the borrowing history of both individual and corporate borrower. YM Deostale Committee submitted its report on the public credit registry. Now, central repository of information on large credit. Okay. Was set up by whom? Set up by Reserve Bank in 2014-15 for ease in offsite supervision the crucial database contains information from all where all small uh, scheduled commercial bank excluding rrb so all credit information instruments for borrowing having aggregate fund based and not fund based exposure inr 150 million and above surface act what's the full form the securitization and reconstruction of financial assets and informes and informes of Security Interest Act 2002 was enacted to regulate securitization and reconstruction of financial asset and promise of security interest created in respect to financial asset to enable realization of such asset. The Kisan Credit Card KCC scheme was introduced in 1998 RV Gupta Committee. Right. Let's move forward. So at present, short-term crop loans, INR 3 lakh are covered under interest submission scheme, prompt repayment incentive scheme of government of India. Currently 2% interest submission, the farmer on prompt repayment crop loan on or due to before date. 3% additional interest. So, you know, these are very minor data. Just, just read it once or twice and that would be done. Okay. So, uh, I think all this information you already know through government schemes, right? Still, let us take it quick revision so uh, limit for second and subsequent year of kcc it's you know uh, for crop cultivation purpose arrived as above plus 10 percent of the limit towards cost escalation increase right the tenure is five year now what is the insurance coverage insurance coverage of kcc scheme holder is rupees 50000 in case of permanent disability or death a cover of 25000 is given in case of other risk Right now, let's move forward. Uh, this is related to interest submission, and you have already seen it. 
so just go through it that would be enough right now let's move forward as for the rbi norms indian scheduled commercial banks are required to maintain a cra of how much nine percent basel 3 says it at eight percent a capital to risk weighted assets ratio is eight percent but rbi said one percent higher at nine percent the rbi introduced capital to risk weighted asset ratio system for the banks operating in 1992 ibc stand for insolvency and bankruptcy court 2016 before IBC, there were multiple law. NCIT were there, company law board were there, DRT, debt recovery, uh, debt recovery tribunals were there, Sarfishi Act, and obviously Uskupar, the courts were there, right? Still courts are there, but yes, now involved, insolvency has become a professional thing, okay? It's in for, uh, through insolvency and bankruptcy court. So NCLT appoints the insolvency professional upon confirmation by the, in, uh, by the IBBI board. Now, Let's move forward. Fugitive Economic Offenders Act 2018. Okay, what is this act? The act aims to stop economic offenders who leave the country to avoid due legal process. Offense involving amount of rupees 100 crore or more fall under the preview of this law. Not below. Foreign Exchange Management Act. FEMA was enacted in the year 1999 to replace the FERA. 19. 73 under with effect from June 2000 right now prompt corrective action framework prompt corrective action PCA uh, under the RBI under a supervisory framework user uses various measure tools to maintain sound financial health of banks under prompt corrective action PCA framework RBI has specified certain regulatory trigger points in the terms of three parameters that is Capital to risk weighted asset ratio CRAR, net non performing asset NNPA, and return on asset ROA. Once bank hits certain level of threshold in terms of these three parameters, RBI initiates certain structured and disciplinary actions. Right now, consumer price index CPI, the base year for the index is 2011 12 and are published monthly by national. Statistical Office NSO for all India. Okay, then wholesale price index WPI. The base year for WPI is 2011-12 and is published monthly by Office of Economic Advisor, Department of Promotion and Industry and Internal Trade DPIIT under Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Right now, with this the last one and the ratio of nominal GDP to real GDP is called the GDP deflator. GDP deflator is published by whom? And as so. So, uh, you know, uh, from 201 to 300, the part 3 of the lecture will have more detail regarding this. So, this particular line will take up in the next lecture. Till then, we wish you very good luck from Team Trade Grade B. Happy and thank you. Learning.